<laughs> What's up guys, welcome back to another video. Just over here at work for World Headquarters, getting all of my uh, you know, morning orders taken care of. It's the first thing I do every morning. Well, I'll take that back. Gym is now the first thing I do every morning at about six o'clock in the morning. Then come get care of all the uh, work for it orders, and then it is uh, you know the contractor life after that. So getting all these orders boxed up, ready to go. You guys have been really blowing up the work for it apparel website, and for that I thank you guys. You know work for it was a movement I started a while back. I never thought it would grow as big as it has to where we are across the country as well as across the world. You know Australia, Canada, and spreading to more countries every day. So thank you guys for blowing up the website. Uh, you know, I got a bunch of new hats in, so that's why this place is kind of a mess. You know, we just got a fresh shipment in. That's why uh, shit is everywhere. But, uh, you know, maybe some of the hats that you guys have been waiting for uh, are back in stock. So check the website. I'll put up the link right here, workforitapparel.com. You know, maybe some of your favorites are back in stock. And uh, out of curiosity, what is your guys' favorite hat? You know, leave down in the comment section. I'm curious to what you guys like. I get a lot of people hitting me up all the time that are younger or, you know, even my age and older saying, hey, you know, we want to start an apparel company. I've been thinking about doing it forever. You know, what's the trick? And the trick really is just doing it. You know, I've talked about it forever too. And the day that I made it real is when things just started really kind of clicking and going into place. There's not, I mean, there might be a handbook on how to do it, but it's not something I've ever looked into or read. You know, it's all kind of been uh, learn as you go. And that's kind of how I like to do things. You know, it's just really, you come up with a problem and you figure out a solution. And one of my biggest or favorite things to do is kind of figure out how to make things more efficient. Um, it's huge in construction. Efficiency is a either going to be a money breaker or a money breaker. So if you are not efficient, you can definitely lose out on a lot of money. And I'm learning how to apply that to the apparel company as well. I mean, simple things like, you know, when I ship, uh, when I ship out decals, I do it in a folded piece of cardboard. That way the decal is protected. Well, I used to sit there and mark all of them so they're folded in half perfectly um, would have to walk out find an edge to fold them on and it was just becoming a pain in the butt it would take forever to fold a bunch of cardboard and it might seem like a little thing but that would take a ton of time and as all you guys know time is money and so I decided alright I gotta come up with a faster way I mean I'm a contractor I can build something real quick a jig you know jigs are huge time savers so within about five minutes I came up with this simple jig makes folding cardboard super easy no need to measure all you do is take a piece of cardboard, put it up on there, fold it in half, and you have a perfectly folded in half piece of cardboard. You know, and it's little things like that. That's the kind of stuff I love to kind of figure out. But anyways, I don't want to bore you guys with all those details. It's time to get the day started. And first things first, we got to take the F-350 in to get some brakes done on her. And we're taking her over to Preston's, which you guys have seen. It's a shop I do all my work at. And just so happens to be next to a Ram dealer. And you guys have been telling me forever that I need to go check out some of the newer Cummins. So I say today is the perfect day to do that. Man, is it a hot one today? I think it's already about, I think, 90 something in the morning. It's supposed to hit about 100 today. So, so much for the uh, cold mornings that we had the other day. What do you guys think about my sweet Bluetooth modification for the truck? Ugh. Does the job for now until I put an aftermarket in. If any of you guys got any experience with those Android based head units, let me know because I want to put one in this truck, but they kind of seem a little bit funky. What's up, gentlemen? I'm just going to show you why I haven't called you back. Yeah, we can do this live. We can give them shit because something tells me oh, they suck at life. Everything oh, here. Okay. These are how many freaking emails I've gone through to get them to give me a fucking price. <laughs> They're like, where are you at? And I'm like, I've given you all of my information to show you that I'm a shopper. Jesus. It's just, I'm, they haven't replied back to me. The last time I talked to them was on Friday. I'm like, can you please let me know? Where, where are you located? I'm like, dude, I'm trying to get this guy set up so you can get a lift, wheels, tires, everything. I need to know what the pricing of these fucking tires. I know right. they're not available till December, but. Well, there. So, there. Fury tires. You guys suck. You just lost a customer. Right there. I just lost. I'm done. I'm done. I'm not going to deal with somebody that's that shitty. We're trying to price out dually tires, some Fury 40s, and they don't want to give us a price. Oh well. Yo! What up? Just the guy you wanted to see on a Monday morning. Right? <laughs> Come on, bro, we're making you famous. Everybody remembers you from the last video when you found <laughs> Bulletproof's shitty broken bolts. What are we doing to this thing? Fixing it because it's a Ford. There. Well, I brought you a Ford to fix too. When are we going to lift that thing? When are you going to find me a fucking axle? I have found one. They're like a thousand bucks these days. Okay, yeah. well then. Do you want a straight axle or what? I have to. What are we going to do? Custom beams? 
by the time I do that, it's gonna cause as much a straight axle. Well, there you go. Man, new thing's ancient. Hell yeah. Old school around here. I don't even know which which one it goes to though. Um, Zach, do you know which one goes to the auxiliary? It's very important. Tommy's got to be right. It's like tape. CD maybe? Might be tape. And <laughs> <laughs> oh, he left. <laughs> yeah. Little Miami Vice theme song. Playing through the shop. Later, boys. All right, Ford's all done. The plan was totally to walk over to the Dodge dealership, but it's about, I don't know, 105 out here. And it's a little bit more of a walk than I want to make today. So we'll drive over to the Dodge dealership and uh, check out some Cummins. Right? Yeah. Cisco, man. Cisco. And I used to, I worked for GM for 10 okay. years. Uh, the Chevy's a good one, man. I mean, uh, the 06 or 05 and a half LBC diesel, diesel right. it's a good way to go. It's like <laughs> Everybody knows what they got, so they want 30 grand for yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. And then the 08 before all the emission mods on the on the Duramax, right. it's also a great year. Um, the Cummins, you really can't go wrong on any year. I mean, we have sweet years, though. We have 07 and a half, it's kind of a sweet spot for Right. Because you get a... You got a 6.7 with the 5.9 emissions. Um, and then obviously the 5.9 all around is a good way to go too. Right. You know? um, well, right now, like apples apples comparison, if you're looking at new diesels, you know, um, Cummins is by far dominant. So I feel bad making this sales guy walk around. He's got, he's got a boot on his leg, but he's super cool. I like to make a cab. Yeah, if you're gonna, you might as well go make a cab. Like in, in white, I have, the sport appearance package in the 18 they actually changed the grill it looks really nice it's got like the limited style grill gotcha i'll show it to you there's one okay. right here you got basically the laramie wheel but it's blacked out and all the emblems are blacked out okay um the bumpers instead of chrome they're body colored gotcha. the grill instead of chrome it's body colored okay the handles instead of chrome it's body colored you know and then like the the, the mirrors Instead of body color, they're black. You know, so gotcha. this is kind of a this is kind of a nice package, and this is a Laramie. And if you check out the grill, this is the limited style grill, gotcha. but in a Laramie. In so well, let me just open both of these yeah, up yeah, so you can yeah. kind of check it out, and yeah. then and then we'll go from there. Sounds good. Yeah. Feel bad making you walk. Nah, you cool, man. You sure. Like three days ago, I was in crutches, you know. Oh, so shit. I'm actually doing way better. Probably feels good to get off those damn things. Yeah, it does, man. So I'm sure a lot of people are going to chastise me for this and I should probably walk away from the freeway as you can see behind me that is really loud and probably screwing up this shot, probably screwing up most of the film that I'm doing right here, but is what it is. But uh, I know a lot of people call the mega cab dualies with the short beds useless, saying the bed's useless and all that shit, but those are some of the sexiest looking dualies in my opinion. Obviously the new Ford dualies look fucking beautiful as well, but prior to those coming out, the Mega Cab short bed dualies were definitely by far my favorite dually. Um, I wish they had one here. Unfortunately, they don't. Now looking at like, I guess these uh, these wheels and shit that they're putting on, it's just something about Rams seem a little bit cheap to me. I don't know what it is. Um, you know, I know you're gonna get some of these newer features that Ford has. Um, we're gonna see when he grabs the keys right now. But for some reason, like looking at these black wheels over here, they just, I don't know what it is. I mean, obviously they're factory black wheels, but they just, for some reason, they really look cheap. But don't worry, we'll make California happy. Certified clean idol. So sick of this California emissions bullshit. Thing on the Laramie, you get passive entry, so uh, the key will never recognize when it's, with, when it's within 36 inches. You can walk up to it, just put your hand in the door handle. There's a sensor in the door handle. No shit. It'll unlock. I don't know what it is, but I always run into good sales guys. You know, they're always super willing to show me shit. They always don't mind being on camera. So, it's really cool. I definitely appreciate it. Um, 
Powertrain wise, if you go diesel, you can only get uh, the 68 RFE high torque transmission, the 6.7 liter. Um, the torque will be 850 foot pounds of torque, I think with 350 horsepower right around they there. Don't do the, uh, what is it, the ASIN anymore? Okay, so the ASIN is only available on a 3500. Gotcha. So you can go 3500 single rear wheel. Right. But the thing you'll be sacrificing is uh, the five lead coil suspension. The five lead coil suspension is only on the 2500, and it really is the better ride. Gotcha. It's, that's what really sets us apart from a lot of other trucks because everybody's on leaf springs. Right. So my camera is really hating this heat today, so there's going to be like weird blotchy spots where videos don't exactly meet up perfectly because my camera overheated and shut off partly through videoing. So we're about to take this one for a test drive. And I know one thing, Dodge puts the longest fucking running boards I've ever seen in my life. And I'm sure there's going to be 500 people getting pissed that I'm entertain interchanging Ram and Dodge, but I'll try and call it Ram. Back seats on these mega cabs are huge. Doesn't look like they go back any further though. It just looks like they recline further. So I don't know how much better that is. I always appreciate when people are willing to pick up a camera. So I do appreciate you. No problem holding it for me. This is my first time ever doing this. So what are you gonna do with this video? Uh, everything's on YouTube. I went and looked at the newer Fords because everybody's like, dude, you gotta check out all the convenience features and all that. You're missing out on that on Chevy. Um, and yeah, they're fucking like, you know, it's massage sheets and all that shit. It's like, well, fuck same cost as my truck why am i not getting that shit you know ram chrysler has really or mopar has really focused a lot on the ram and, yeah and it, it's the product that we sell the most so um the interior uh from 2014 moving forward it, our interior has been top notch truck okay i hear the exhaust break now downshift one more There it is. Yeah, you can even go one more probably. Oh yeah. And I mean, oh shit. It'll show you when you're using your exhaust brake, and then when you're using boots. Gotcha. You know, so so yeah. Oh, nice. And, and you can get pretty close to 30 psi boost on Damn. this thing. See that you have way more control over your exhaust brake than you do on the Chevy. See, and I'm not familiar with it. So when we go off this little hill at the bottom of the hill, there's gonna be a speed hump. Okay. This is gonna be a test right here for the five lean coil suspension. You can uh, run, right. run right through it like a 30-35. Just don't jam on your brakes when you're in the middle of the speed hump. Right. You know? And you'll feel how the rear suspension absorbs the the, the, the impact. Okay. You know, so um, try it in a Ford, try it in a Chevy, and the people in the back seat would probably hit their head on the ceiling, you know? Right. Oh, dear, the yeah. back's way smoother. It's like nothing. Yeah. You know? This hostage for like half an hour. Jeez. Tell me what you need me to do to convince you to go away from the GM. <laughs> oh, but I'll, let me tell you one thing. What's that? Okay, so I worked for Chevrolet, and I noticed a trend that people were going to Ram. Okay. Okay, on the light duty, because mainly light duty is what sells the most. Well, that's my thing. You know, I went and looked at the Fords, and everybody that's as Die hard Chevy you're like gonna me. Be a, you're gonna be a testimony, man. Well, everybody that went looked at that's a die hard Chevy like me, like, what are you doing? You're you're the biggest trader ever. And it's like, dude, you don't oh, know till you go see. And if you're gonna see that close minded, you're gonna be stuck in that you rut for your entire life. Minded, you know, right. Because things start changing. There's a lot of people that were loyal to Ford. The 6 0 came out, <laughs> yeah. and then Ford the, wasn't back in their 6 0 at all. You know, they would leave you high and dry. Yep. And you know what happened? People started going to GM or people started going to Ram. And, all right, brother. All right, Again, I appreciate Take it. Take it easy. Hello? All right. Well, they didn't have any uh, mega cab dualies on uh, on site, but we got to, uh, you know, we got to take a little chest drive in a mega cab. Now, I will say uh, Ram. I know I was gonna say Dodge. Uh, I guess when Dodge switched from Ram, whatever. They're doing a lot of the soft touch interior features like uh, Chevy and all them are doing now. So no more plastic dashes. The Dodge or the Ram actually felt, uh, it felt a lot more high-end than any Ram I had been in previously. So I give them credit on that. Um, but the exterior, certain things just seem cheap about it. And I don't know what it is. I love the Cummins. Don't get me wrong. I'm a big Cummins fan. 
give me a Cummins with an Allison and you got a whole nother fucking monster. But uh, this sales guy seemed pretty cool. You know, obviously he's trying to sell a Ram, but he seemed to know at least a little bit about every single diesel engine. I've ran into a lot of sales guys on different lots that have no clue, any, you know, they don't know anything about the diesels. They're used to the gas engines and even then, uh, it's hard to get actual, like real questions answered, you know, not just stuff that they would read off the sticker. So, you know, am I gonna go Ram? I would say probably not. Um, and I think ideally the vehicle that I'm looking for now, being that, you know, the newer Chevys, or the newer, I guess, GM, so the newer Duramax is, uh, currently are untunable. And I know everybody's gonna say, but wait, no, somebody's gonna come out. And I know there's a ton of rumors out there, but from all the rumors I've been reading, they're saying it's gonna take forever, if it's even possible, to crack the ECM on the L5P. So that being said, if you've ever driven a tuned diesel, you don't wanna drive a non-tuned diesel. So if I go buy a new 2018 L5P, and I'm not gonna be able to tune it for the next couple years, if ever, that's kind of a gamble because I'm gonna put a lot of money in suspension and all that and then I'm gonna get stuck with a truck that can't be tuned. Um, so I'm kind of thinking and I'm kind of leaning towards uh, a 2016, I'm kind of thinking going Denali. Um, so I'm gonna kind of be on the hunt. If you guys saw my latest Instagram post, um, I'm seeing if anybody can find a low mile to used one. Um, I hate buying used, uh, but I don't really don't have a choice. I want a diesel that I can tune. Um, so it's gonna have to be, uh, it's gonna have to be a 2016 or older. So obviously I'm gonna try and get the newest 2016 low mile I can find, uh, and just see what's out there. These trucks are hard to find. Nobody's obviously really putting up a 2016 for sale yet. They're still new. So as badass as the L5P is, not being able to tune it is just ruining it for me. And I know you guys are gonna say, but it's got the power gains and all that. Yeah, but just trust me, a tuned diesel, a deleted diesel versus a stock L5P, regardless of where the power numbers are, um, there's just a lot more benefits to having the delete. So, there we go. we're gonna take off out of here. It is hot as balls out here. Why, I don't know, it's supposed to be winter or fall or I don't even know what it is. Um, as always guys, thank you for watching. Uh, this quest to find a new truck is killing me, it's taking forever. And I'm sure you guys are kinda on the edge of your seat as well, waiting to figure out what I want, but I don't wanna just jump into this one, um, you know, without fucking really thinking. It's uh, it's a big decision, it's a lot of money, and I want to do it right. So I'm going to keep hunting. If you're not subscribed to my channel, please click subscribe now. Please remember to give this video a thumbs up, aka a like. And uh, as always, guys, I appreciate it. I'm out. Damn. Uh. Yeah. Uh. Yeah. Yeah. Uh.